Twitch is going to get into a bunch, a, a, a little bit of trouble here because they don't have a dynamic system of ads and these larger companies keep pulling out of ad deals because um, I was thinking about this this morning, but it seems like Twitch is inevitably and kind of invariably like plummeting towards a, a another like a light version of my free cams. And, and, and like, I, that's not me criticizing sex work because I don't do that. But like, it's, it's me saying that like, Twitch reaches a point where the vast majority of advertisers just don't want to be on the website. And then the site has to make some tough choices. I, I think that's a real problem. I, I don't know how to solve. Isn't that why Twitch has rolled out the rating approval system for each stream? Yeah, but that's not backed by a dynamic ad system. So like, I mean, it eventually could be. So like, if you were to find a way to automatically classify every stream through ML, then you would solve that problem. But I'm of the opinion that Twitch is nowhere near that, that kind of thing technologically to be able to solve that. I, 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 don't, I don't think they're even close to that. But like YouTube, for example, can have the exact same type of content that Twitch does because like inflatable hot tubs are no problem on YouTube because that content just gets served advertisements that are relevant to it. And then if I make my video about like Warhammer 40K, then like I get that kind of ads and that's it. Even if they have a whole separate section for adult content that still alters the general image or brand for the website. Yeah. And that's the problem with it is like, you can't, I, again, I'm not speaking from like an ethics standpoint. I don't know what like is ethically correct or whatever. What, what, like what I'm saying is you really can't have this kind of content on this website at all. If you want to be taken seriously as an ad platform, it just doesn't happen. And then like, once you're in like the Pornhub tier of ads, what happens is you monetize so much worse because there's so, there's so many fewer clients who are willing to buy those ads. I find those streams kind of boring and a bit pathetic. Why watch a girl in a pool and like better content at Chatterbait? <clears throat> better subjective, my friend. There's nothing wrong with the content. Whether a girl's in a hot tub or not doesn't matter to me. The fact that what she does then influences every other streamer on the platform to take a 50% hit to CPM is what annoys me. Does that make sense? So I, 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 don't, I don't give a what a person wants to do on their stream that's like they're not harming anybody and, and, and like look like one of the best ways to make money right now on the platform is to use twitch as a funnel into paid platforms so like if you're a girl that's like throwing up a hot tub stream to be clear your goal is to get people on only fans right like that's what you're trying to do you go look at every one of the girls that's doing that that's what they're doing they're driving people to their only fans because the, what, they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get, you know, a 1% or 2% conversion of people over to paid subscription models on websites with lower, um, with, with, with lower takes, like, 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 you know, like a 20% take in OnlyFans case. And that makes perfect sense to me. Like, if, if you look at someone like Amaranth, for example, who I'm not talking negatively about, we rep Amaranth, right? Like, and I have a lot of respect for, what she, for the work she does. She's fucking crushing it doing this model. Like, she's just absolutely annihilating it, right? Like, her viewership has gone up, like, some fucking unbelievable amount. And, and at the same time, she's able to drive users to her paid platforms, like, very, very well. So, like, in the last seven days, her content's gone up 30%, her, her viewership. In the last 14 days, her, con her, her, her viewership's gone up 92%, right? And in the last 30 days, it's gone up 64%. So, like, this is, like, a fucking crazy number, right? And, like, all that changed, quite literally, was, like, the hot tub meta. And so, if she can sit in a pool for nine hours and drive viewers to her paid platforms, why would you not do that? It's just intelligent business sense. Like, everyone blaming the girls is um, super dumb. Like, like, the girls are just taking advantage of, of a meta, right? That's, like, totally fine. But, like, if we look at Twitch holistically the problem is that you run into a situation where those girls benefit a huge amount but everybody else takes the cpm hit because advertisers don't want to throw their hat in with that and that's not how they monetize if you can't control where your ads are shown you you're, you're so limited like imagine if all youtube ads were dependent on the worst youtube channel like the fucking Spider-Man fucking Elsa YouTube channel or the Minecraft porn channel, right? Like you'd have a situation where nobody would advertise on YouTube because, and that's the, that's the situation that Twitch is in. There's, there's, there's no way you can fix that. And Twitch is in a situation right now where they can't ban 
the use of hot tub streams because people are going to come at them. And Twitch is terrified of this for like attacking women's ability to work and like women's ability to build careers. And there's some argument that like that's legit. Like if you do ban for this reason, um, if, if you if you do ban girls from doing inflatable hot tub stuff, there's like an argument there that that could be the case. And they don't want that. Like the one thing that Twitch doesn't want to be is like the feeling that they are an inclusive, like they're not an inclusive platform. To wait, they enforced it with TOS rules enforcement. First of all, no, they didn't. <laughs> like their take in the community rules section is we don't like sexualized content, but they're not, and not in a single hot tub streamer has been like banned. Like they banned um, a hot tub streamer for a nipple slip recently, but they're not, they're not, no one would say that they're consistent with their, with their, like with their ban strategy here or that they have a strategy at all. Okay. So there's so many people I'm seeing partners say this, which means you guys have influence and need to like understand this. So like everyone that's saying, just make another category, just put them in 18 plus. You don't understand. It's about the overall holistic impression of the website. Okay. So if I have 5,000 streams on a website, that are uh, totally above the water and just Minecraft people. And I have five people, five streamers out of those 5,000 are doing like gland on gland, hardcore porn. The entire website gets colored by those five streams. That's how it works. There, there, is, there is no advertiser that will go on that platform and advertise with those 4,995 streamers because of the five that do porn. That is, the, that is what the situation of Twitch is in. You can't just throw them in a category and not run ads there because they still represent the website. And just think about this logically, right? Like, think about it. Like, if Pornhub started to sell you courses on building skills like video editing, would you trust them? <laughs> you know, like, like it, it, it's just like, you know what you're getting when you, when you go to the website, right? Like, this is, this is, this is always true. This is, this is true for like OnlyFans. Like, I could theoretically put, a only fans up and then i could only post pictures of me eating food or a selfie of my face every day and i'm not doing any pornography on only fans but because i have created an only fans i will be associated with pornography right if i run for president in 10 years and like and i have an only fans no one's going to take the time to be like oh he just puts pictures of his fucking food there they're going to be like he does porn that's the problem. That's the issue. Why doesn't this apply to YouTube? You were saying that YouTube has Minecraft porn on it, but they still have a ton of ads. Because dynamic search terms mean that you as a client... Okay, so you as a client viewing that brand can never a search... This is a complicated answer, so I, I may not explain this. Like This is really hard to explain because this is a really complicated concept. Most people are not going to get this. Okay, so... If I'm a client and I get served an ad with a, that, that's, that, that's towards a brand, I will never be associated with Minecraft porn because of the way that dynamic search on YouTube works. So I will only be associated with the keyword-based shit that I signed up for via that brand. So if a brand, let's use an example like uh, someone that sells like McDonald's wants to do an ad on youtube okay and they decide that their demographic is 16 to 36 year old males who uh, have consumed fast food in the last month or so okay they can then exclude advertising tiers because of how specific ads work that you will never ever see a mcdonald's ad on those youtube videos those youtube porn videos mcdonald's will never ever be associated with that because of the way that dynamic ads work. But because that keyword system doesn't exist on Twitch, it doesn't work that way. YouTube ads are always served in the way that is defined by the brand. And brands want to control that process. How easy is it for Twitch to build the, safe, the same system? Well, it took YouTube eight years and billions of dollars and the backing of the most intelligent search engine on the planet. I would venture so far as to say that it is not possible for Twitch to build this.
what is this the solution? The solution is to the solution is difficult. The solution is to separate content creators into tiers, green, yellow, and red, based on the a subjective OCR and ACR definition of advertiser friendliness, and then to manually modify it for the top 1,000 streams. Since 99.9% .9 of the ads on Twitch are going to get served to the top 1,000 streams, right? So you toss people who are actual brand risks into red or yellow categories, and then you serve ads across to the green categories, and you're able to, you're able to basically segment a brand away from advertising on a brand risk stream. But as someone just said in chat, uh, this would cause a lot of drama because you would be effectively ranking Twitch streamers. So you would say this partner is a brand risk and goes into the red category. This partner is not a brand risk and goes into the green category. And there would be all kinds of bullshit that's associated with that. However, YouTube does the exact same thing. YouTube will literally assign somebody into a red or yellow category. And you just, they, you know, this is what you, you just accept it. But there's no other way. And, and, and honestly, I would argue too, it's totally fine for, for Twitch and their subjective opinion to label somebody a brand risk. I'm fine with that. Like, I, th I think everybody should be fine with that. It's just one of those situations that like, because we haven't been there yet, it will be a huge shit show. It wouldn't be a problem if the platform tells them that the stream they're in the red and gives advice on how to change it. Yeah, and gives like a pathway of redemption. It would still be a problem because people would argue that they're not brand risks. How many, or, or like, I guess more relevantly, let's use this context, like how many times have, has a fucking streamer on Twitter been like, I don't know why I was banned. Like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, like, um, yeah, I mean, I was like, I was just like, I just said the N word a few times and then like, you, like, I don't know what happened. Like, like, just like, like people never take any kind of accountability or ownership. Like, they, like there, like there's so many cases on, um, like I've like where I actually this is so funny, right? Because like I I know a lot of times like why people high profile people get banned, and I like I know the real reason because I'm either just on the agency side I see it or like we talk about it or like I know exactly like why someone got banned, and then I see the public response to it and their individual like context of why it happened, like the streamer's actual explanation on Twitter of why it happened. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is nowhere near what actually happened. It, it, that happens so often. So you can't rely at all on, like, on, like, individual streamers taking any sort of accountability for it. They're always going to be the victims. By virtue of the fact that, like, if you're going to get to be, like, a top 0001% streamer, your trait narcissism is usually very highly correlated with that level of success, I have noticed. And part of narcissism is not really accepting that, like, you're not the top dog and that, like, you've done something wrong or, like, or, 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 like taken some accountability. So it'll always be a shit show for Twitch to do that. But Twitch just has, like, the, one of the biggest problems with, like, Twitch is, like, they constantly capitulate, but they capitulate in this, like, halfway house. And, like, the philosophy I always have is, like, either capitulate completely and say, you know what, we're wrong, we're going to do it the other way, or alternatively double dick down fuck all of you here's how we're doing it now if you don't like it suck my balls i don't care we have this is our platform we do whatever the fuck we want but twitch never does that they always go to some halfway house and they fucking capitulate halfway and it always looks awkward and weird it always looks awkward and weird to do that and like really if you want to fix this situation like you either have to go full draconian on it and be like, you know what? No more inflatable hot tubs. Any sexual content or bikinis we see outside of the beach are gone. This needs to be an advertiser-friendly platform. We are losing $300 million a year. Or you say, this is fine. This is what we're going to do. That's whatever. Or we're going to classify Twitch streamers. If you don't like it, whatever. Obviously, I'm not advocating for Twitch to come out and say, suck my balls. But that would be fucking hilarious. No, I'm advocating for some for, for communication that's more along the lines of like what like what we haven't seen from Twitch yet, which is like not a capitulation. Um, it, it, it's like an exec like an executive toe along the lines of something like this. Just like look, like we've talked to the community, we acknowledge this. The fact of the matter is that we have to make tough decisions at our position right now. There are we we can't work in like black and white. There is literally just probabilities. And so we have to take the shot that over the long term, 
we're going to make this an advertiser friendly website. We're not trying to exclude anybody. We're not trying to fuck anybody over, but this is the position we've got to take to make a healthier website. If you don't like it, we're sorry. That's it. This is the direction we're going. And then just fucking turn off your phones, right? Just turn off your phone for five days. Fucking people are so fickle. They'll forget about it. Twitch is so afraid of that like two day backlash on Twitter that like they won't make the decisions that they have to do to save this website from YouTube. Like ironically, the, the, the shit that they're doing is going to cause them to, to get, to, they're going to get their salad tossed by YouTube in short order because YouTube, by the way, is not afraid to make those decisions and never has been. YouTube has like a mother brain AI that just chops down channels wantonly. Like YouTube will just fucking obliterate a channel because they like feel that it's like something they don't want. And then they'll, they'll not, they won't apologize for it. YouTube's nuts. And because they're able to make those tough decisions, like their website supports advertisers that will pay top dollar, and it's, a, it's an enormously profitable enterprise. Here's what the TLDR is, right? The problem is that the way that Twitch goes from here to become like a proper website is they make it a welcoming place for brands to advertise in. But to do that, you have to have every advertisement be contextually relevant to what the brand wants. And the amount of work that that's going to take for Twitch to build that system is probably impossible. So what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to categorize influencers by their level of brand risk, probably manually for the top ones, and then eventually institute an ML system that does that. It's hard. It's really hard. And, and, and I think they're working on this, and that's why we're seeing like, like the Twitch social score memes or like the updates in the directory page or things like that. But yeah, there's, there's like the writings on the wall. It's, 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 it's just, there's no reason at all to put advertising dollars into Twitch versus YouTube right now. There's, there's literally zero reason.